Okay, so you probably clicked on this video thinking, uh, what? Well, today I want to present to you a Dead by Daylight theory. The theory, simply put, is that when the nurse blinks, she is attempting to escape the entity's realm and doesn't actually want to serve it. The first thing I want to bring up to try and prove my theory is the nurse's attitude, I guess, within trials that shows she is deceiving the entity or at least feels bad about her actions. We can see this during her Mori, which you'll notice is much more caring in a way for the person's life she's just ended. She seems to almost most be upset at the fact that she's done it and more down to being required to. This could be out of fear for the entity or it could be due to her still believing deep down to have some kind of emotion. Sally prior to getting taken had a fairly tragic life, losing her husband and going insane within Crotus Bren, resulting in her killing a bunch of patients. This seems strange though for her to kill all those people but treat the survivors with care. With all this in mind, why would the nurse help the entity? Why would she kill for it? To further this, I want to look at the nurse's power, Spencer's last breath. This power allows nurse to phase forward with the consequence being what seems to be a considerable amount of pain, based on the fact that she screams quite loudly. So if her power hurts so much, why does she use it? Sure, again, it could be because she doesn't want to displease the entity and the pain is better than failing it, but that doesn't really just put an end to it. She seemingly has telekinetic powers too. Why not just grab the survivors with those and kill them that way? With these telekinetic powers in mind, let's consider the origin of these powers, as I think it's important to answering this question. When moving around, the nurse is always floating. She literally doesn't use her legs. This suggests that she is the one holding herself up and is therefore capable of making objects float and such, right? Further, her power, specifically her blink, is actually an ability that lets her briefly break into something called the spirit world, which is described to look the same as the entity's realm, except it's covered in black fog, and it's a place where you can't interact with the entity's realm directly, only view it. So Nurse is already kind of escaping into this different world each time she blinks. However, let's consider, who else do we know that is capable of levitating objects and also lives in a dark, foggy place where you can't interact with the main realm? That's right, the Observer. A person, from what it seems, is not in the Entity's favour but does seem to be trapped within its realm, except he's managed to remain unseen in this tower that he appears to reside in. Now, what I'm about to say may seem like a leap but I want you to stick with me here. I believe the Observer to be Sally's husband, Andrew. Alright, okay, thought I'd leave a little pause there for you to sigh. Here's my reasoning. <laughs> From the lore it states that her husband is supposedly gone, but not dead. It never says dead. It's implied, but it never says he's dead in her base lore. We can back this up a little bit within the two wedding cosmetics for the nurse, which state, a special day left at the altar, no one shall rest until a soulmate is found. The other repeats that same phrase, but adds at the end, it's a nice day to start again, until a soulmate is found. This could mean a lot, but it could be hinting that Sally before entering the Entity's realm was trying to find her husband, and now that she's in it, still is. Okay, but why does that make the Observer her husband? The main connection between them, as mentioned before, is their ability to levitate objects, some kind of telekinesis. It seems strange that these would be the only two to hold this connection, right? Especially due to their heavily different roles within the Entity's realm. For this next bit, I want you to stick with me. I know I've said that a few times, but this is gonna seem like a stretch. We're gonna look at Sally's Halloween cosmetic, Sally of the Lantern, which is basically just a jack-o'-lantern on her head. There's a bunch of different stories behind jack-o'-lanterns, but in brief, one of them goes like this. The story of the jack-o'-lantern comes in many forms and is similar to the story of Will of the Wisp, retold in different forms across Western Europe, including Italy, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. In Switzerland, children will leave bowls of milk or cream out for mythical house spirits called Jacko the Bowl. An old Irish folktale from the mid-18th century tells of Stingy Jack, a lazy yet shrewd blacksmith who uses a cross to trap Satan. One story says that Jack tricked Satan into climbing an apple tree and once he was up there, Jack quickly placed crosses around the trunk or carved a cross into the bark so that Satan couldn't get down. Another version of the story says that Jack was getting chased by some villagers from whom he had stolen. He then met Satan who claimed it was time for him to die. However, the thief stalled his death by tempting Satan with a chance to bedevil the church showing villagers chasing him. Jack told Satan to turn into a coin with which he would pay for the stolen goods. Later, when the coin disappeared, the Christian villagers would fight over who had stolen it. The devil agreed to this plan. He turned himself into a silver coin and jumped into Jack's wallet. Only to find himself next to a cross, Jack had also picked up 
up in the village. Jack had closed the wallet tight, and the cross stripped the devil of his powers, and so he was trapped. In both folk tales, Jack lets Satan go only after he agrees to never take his soul. Many years later, the thief died, as all living things do. But of course, Jack's life has been too sinful for him to go to heaven. However, Satan had promised not to take his soul, and so he was barred from hell as well. Jack now had nowhere to go. He asked how he would see where to go, as he had no light, and Satan mockingly tossed him a burning coal to light his way. Jack carved out one of his turnips, which were his favourite food, put the coal inside, and began endlessly wandering the earth for a resting place. He became known as Jack of the Lantern, or Jack-o-Lantern. Now, does this not sound a lot like the Observer, a person not in heaven nor hell, wandering about, observing, but being kept alive or allowed to live as he managed to deceive the devil? or in our case, the Entity. So, our Jack here is the Observer, or Andrew. It seems strange to then have this connection to Sally of the Lantern, if it is not connected with our Jack. And as Jack in this situation is Andrew, it would mean that Sally, his wife, would be the Sally of the Lantern, the counterpart to her husband who has deceived the Entity and remains hidden within a tower within its realm. Let's now look at an add-on called Torn Bookmark, which reads, A white and pristine piece of ribbon once attached to a sacred book serves as the symbol of a dispute. This is very interesting wording, and what I take from this if we run with this idea of the Observer being Andrew Smithson, we understand that maybe a lot like other characters such as Elodie, who were aware of the Entity, and potentially had experienced the Entity take someone close to them. I mean, could this be his father that ends up in the tower, and he went searching for him? My theory is that Andrew Smithson was actively trying to gain access to the Entity's realm, a bit like Elodie, like I mentioned. Reading through sacred and ancient texts, which resulted in his wife, Sally, rightly so getting a bit angry that he was attempting to enter the realm of a Lovecraftian-esque god monster. This would explain why it mentions the ripped ribbon being a symbol of dispute, a torn bookmark. Bookmarks are things that line the shelves of the Observer's Tower. He has tons of sacred-looking books. It was ripped in the middle of a fight between them, so where from here? So, Andrew finds a way into the Entity's realm from his sacred books, but a lot like what happened to Kate, he gets kind of dragged in and can't pull himself out in time to speak to Sally. Once he gets there, a bit like the jack-o'-lantern story, he deceives the Entity in some way, and upon agreement with it, he gets to wander the alternate world, the spirit world, safe from its grasp, but unable to interact with the Entity's main world and only observe it, placing him in a state of purgatory, not quite heaven, not quite hell. Sally gets the feeling that her husband's disappearance is down to the Elder God he's been researching, and decides to read through his books herself. She comes to the understanding that the Entity takes people based on emotion or extreme emotion, so she does all she can to get herself taken. She goes and gets a job at Crotus Pren after reading through his books, he left behind and attempts to make herself a prime subject for the Entity to take. It takes two decades of work at Crotus Pren, but eventually she had killed and had driven herself near insane, and became corruptible by the Entity. Alternately, her husband Andrew had led an honest life as a lumberjack, but in secret was searching for the Entity. Therefore, when Andrew arrived in the Entity's realm, he had no extreme emotions or potential to be corrupted, and with use of his knowledge from the books and his research, he managed to deceive the Entity and allow himself to go into the spirit world. To further this, we know that the Entity isn't objected to taking people related to one another. We have two killers who are directly related by bloodline, as well as another which are literally twins. Further, both the Nurse and Observer Tomes were released within Tome 6 Divergence, a divergence being when things part ways. So in this case, husband and wife, one becoming a killer and one remaining defiant to the Entity. Once Sally reaches the Entity's realm, she gets the ability to blink, an ability where she can briefly enter the spirit world to reach her husband, but the Entity keeps her back. Despite this, she keeps trying to get out, she briefly gets freedom when blinking and screams upon returning to the trial, where the Entity has control over her and forces her to hunt the survivors as Andrew is forced to simply observe it all. So... <laughs> Here's our timeline. Sally and Andrew Smithson are normal people, aside Andrew's obsession with his research surrounding a crazy Lovecraftian spider god. This causes some disputes between them, resulting in Andrew leaving her and attempting to find the Entity's realm. Andrew does some research stuff, probably finds a spooky hole somewhere, and falls into the Entity's realm Kate style, and gets taken by the Entity. Sally is upset, so she does all she can to get taken also to find her husband. 
However, due to her husband not being taken directly as he managed to find the entity rather than the entity taking him, he managed to evade the entity's grasp and has hidden himself away in a tower in the spirit world. The tower, as the entity can't reach it, is possibly in the spirit world. The same world that the nurse briefly enters when she blinks. Once Sally gets a job at Crotus Pren and plans to push her emotions to the max so the entity will look her way, after two decades, Sally has driven herself to insanity at the asylum, reading all of the sacred books that her husband had, treating the crazed patients all whilst mourning her husband. She is taken by the entity after the mass murder at Crotus Pren. Once in the entity's realm, she attempts to find her husband, but due to her extreme emotions that got her taken in the first place, she has become subjected to the entity's corruption and further has likely already been partially corrupted. Andrew finds out as the Observer now that Sally has entered the realm, due to being able to see everything with his auras, which lets him see within the entity's fog and witness memories of those within it. So he sees Sally enter and he attempts to reach out to her, breaking the agreement with the entity of being an Observer. He attempts to pull her into the spirit world, but she is held back by the entity, due to it corrupting her already, resulting in her receiving her telekinetic powers from her husband, who has managed to gain such powers as the Observer, but then being restricted due to being exposed to the entity and its corruption. As a result, due to the corruption, the most she can do is a brief blink into the spirit world where her husband resides, which causes severe pain. Where Sally and Andrew believe they could outsmart the entity, the entity maybe was aware of this and so had planned to take Sally for a long while now, and upon arrival has made her power work this way so that she can only ever feel the continual pain as she tries to reach Andrew, only to repeatedly fail. The entity is using her to try and draw the Observer out of the spirit world to save his wife, which would likely result in the entity finally being able to get rid of the Observer, the only person seemingly that can peer into the entity itself and dissect what it sees. Okay, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I do hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think of this. Do I belong in Crotus Pred? Thanks, and goodbye. <laughs> An additional thank you to LHPL3, as well as my other members for supporting the channel.